pretty standard there. 103 miles per hour of clubhead speed, 150 miles an hour of ball speed, a normalized carry distance of 247 and a half yards, total of 276 and a spin rate of 1988, launched at 13.1. That's decent, but I can do better. There's five things I'm gonna try and do to increase my swing speed, increase my ball speed, increase my carry and total distance. I'm gonna play all five of them in sequence to see what sort of benefit we earn and then you try the same and see if it doesn't help you send those drives further down the fairway. First thing, step one, I'm gonna make an adjustment in my address orientations to allow for me to make impact on a more positive angle of attack versus a level or downward angle of attack. It's gonna help me launch the same club hit speed, the same ball speed higher, and hopefully add some carry distance. You can do the same. Here's the principle. Think of your swing like it's the red hula hoop. If you make impact on this back golf ball, that's the club head traveling down on the arc. That would be a negative angle of attack. In addition, if you're making impact on a negative angle of attack, there's a good chance the dynamic loft, the loft on the club is pointed more down to the ground than it is up to the sky. That's a recipe for lower launching drivers than you otherwise could if you were making impact rather than at the base of the arc, that would be a zero attack angle, on the forward side of the arc where the club's moving away from the ground. So we think of a negative angle attack as the plane coming down towards the ground. We don't want that with the driver. We want the plane taking off, lifting away from the ground, a positive angle of attack. So if this is our general orientation, ball relatively centered, pressure 50-50, spine, maybe just a little side bent or leaned away from the target for an iron. With driver, if we make one adjustment, and that is stance width, all right? It brings our upper body mass further to the right. If we make a second adjustment, which is tilt more with our spine to the right, effectively what we do is we move the arc and we tilt the arc that little bit more. And so the middle pencil is now more positive angle of attack. That front pencil is an abundance of positive angle of attack. As I've moved my trail foot further away from the target, the relative position of the ball to both feet but more importantly than both feet to my rib cage is now more forward. So let's go up to the golf ball and give this a shot. So that was the starting address position. I'm gonna move, in fact, both feet because I was already wide enough on shot one and I'm gonna tilt my body more to the right. Both of those change the relative ball position, change where that, that arc's at and see, let's see what happens. Better. Felt like it was more positive angle of attack. Let's see what TrackMan says. Okay, so we've got a club speed of 105 miles an hour. I can explain why that happens because that's a secondary adjustment that we're gonna talk about. Ball speed went up to 157, carried to 258, spin rate went up a little bit. The attack angle changed from four tenths of a degree to 1.6. If I applied more, I could launch it even higher. Now the launch angle dropped down. It's only because I didn't tee it up high enough because as the club's moving away from the ground, some amount greater, a number of degrees greater, I need to lift the tee height to make sure that I'm catching the middle of the ball with the middle of the face because the middle of the face is moving away from the ground or at a greater speed at a greater um, distance, right? So I could tee it up higher, make contact in the center of the face. That would drop the spin rate and it would move that carry distance likely higher. But let's get to step two. So step one was effective. Let's see if step two is effective. Okay, step two, are you ready for it? My club head speed was 105 miles an hour. I'm gonna make one adjustment and feel in the backswing to, to hopefully increase the amount of club head speed I create. I've solved the problem in T height that is gonna allow me to hit this one out of the center of the face. So I'm looking for 105 miles an hour to increase. And if it does, and I strike it relatively good on the face, that ball speed should go up from 157. What is that adjustment? It's simple. So I've made my adjustments in statics, right? Wider, tilted to the right some amount. Now I'm gonna allow in the backswing a feeling, a feeling of my pelvis and my rib cage to grow away from the ground. What can support that is some sense that you're allowing pressure or a lift of your lead heel off the ground. What that's gonna do is it's gonna do two things, hopefully. The first is it's gonna take all of your pressure and move it up away from the ground and over your trail side, over your right side. In addition, as it's doing that, it's gonna increase the distance that the handle travels in the backswing. And similar to if I said, I want you to hit my hand with your fist as hard as you can, the further you draw your fist back, 
further you swing the handle back, the greater the distance you have to accelerate through and hopefully amplify that club head speed. Let's get after it. So give it a rehearsal there. The only thing you have to ensure is you're still rotating your body sufficiently well, your normal amount, hopefully even more as you do this. And let's see what impact it has on club head speed. Certainly felt that heel lift. Let's check it out. What does Trackman say? 106.8 was the club head speed. I'll round up to 107, just because I'm that type of person. Uh, 158 miles an hour of ball speed. Since I solved my T height, my attack angle was 1.2 up and the contact was in the center of the face, I've got carry distance of 268 on 1900 RPM. Step two was effective. Step three is gonna be taking the adjustment that we made in the backswing in terms of movement, loading mass pressure over our trail side high, and then we're gonna to start to use it differently in the downswing. We're gonna use it to hopefully create more force with my body down into the ground as if I'm about to leap off my left leg. So let me show you how that works. Similar to any athletic movement, there's this phase of preparation and delivery. And what we wanna do with the driver, since we're trying to maximize the distance this thing can go, because it makes golf a whole lot easier, is we wanna prep with step two, and then we wanna hammer down with step three. And so the transition piece happens early and a lot, where we recenter our body some amount more to the left from where we went back. So we, in the backswing, step two was high and over our right. Now we wanna go down into the left some amount. We wanna feel our lead quad really engage, a lot of pressure in it, and then we can explode away from the ground. So it's really a two phase move, best demonstrated and also best auditioned in a rehearsal. So what I'm meaning there is make a backswing, stop, and then hammer down and extend hammer down and extend. And you'll see in that hammer down phase, when I'm getting ready for the jump, I lower my pelvis, I lower my rib cage, I increase lead knee flex. So I'm actually letting the knee move out towards the golf ball in addition to over my left toe box. As the knee moves, the hip moves, as the hip moves, the shoulders and the rib cage move. Here we got 106.8. Address, backswing, step two, hammer down, step three. Let's get after it. Felt it. Let's see what happened. 108, another one mile per hour. Ball speed went to 160. The carry distance didn't go up. Tack angle was still 3.4. The complication is a complication you're likely to face. If you try each of these things in succession, the more movement that you have, the more we exploit an ability to create more club head speed. I'm now up to 108, but yet my contact location is compromised. It's not gonna happen in one swing where you put all of this together. Good golf shots is like opening a safe that your valuables are in. A safe isn't one number and open, unless it's a biometric safe. In fact, the traditional safes have many numbers that you have to put together in sequence in order to get the reward, which is the safe open and your valuables out. So be patient, wrap it out, apply it five, 10, 15 times, and you're gonna start to connect those first three pieces with better contact. And if it doesn't, that moves us to step four. Step four is about maximizing contact while doing the first three steps correctly. Let's give it a shot. So TrackMan measures contact location as well, both its horizontal across the face and its vertical. The impact height that I made on that last drive as I increased swing speed with using my mass and ground reaction force properly at 108, but the impact location I made was 15 millimeters low on the face and 33 millimeters out on the toe. So if I use a dry race marker, because this will rub off both the club face and the ball, and I identified that contact location, it's somewhere out there where I just drew that box. Ideally, we want to make contact somewhere in that box. In order to do so, and you'll see this on the LPGA and PGA Tour, players put marks on the club face. It's not illegal unless the marks that you make on the club face would raise the surface off the face some amount. So paint pens aren't allowed, but dry erase markers are, but that would rub off. Permanent markers are also allowed. I love to put either a vertical stripe line down the center horizontal across the center of the face 
or just a box that we're trying to make impact in. And so it's really training the skill of hand-eye coordination. In addition to that, dry erase marker on your golf ball, again, it will rub off. As soon as this thing hits the ground out there, if there's any moisture on the ground or friction, it's gonna take this mark off just like so. You won't have to worry about ruining golf balls. And then in addition to that, when the ball washer's washing them, it's gonna come off as well. The beauty of this is this dot is gonna be left on the club face when I make impact somewhere. And it gives me an ability to assess the centeredness of contact on each and every shot without the need for a track man. So we sit it down where the equator, where the dot is, the dead equator, so level with the ground, facing back towards where the club face is. And now we're using a principle of training hand-eye coordination. So we're gonna move the club back slowly to impact, trying to line center the face to dot on ball. Then we're using our first three concepts and seeing if we can't land it more center. Let's see what I did. That's an improvement, isn't it? So I moved from 15 low, 33 to the right, to up into my center box. Now my face to path wasn't good, so the shot wasn't great, but now my impact height was zero versus 15 low and only five millimeters toed versus 33 millimeters toed. And what did I get? I got an increase in swing speed. Why? Because it's my second rep in trying to use that mass shift back, that mass shift forward. And I got an improvement in ball speed to 163 because I struck it out of the center of the face. So that's a one, two, three, four step process. And now I've got the potential. I say the potential to probably carry it about 270 yards. And the reason that one didn't is because I closed the face coming into impact. So my face to path was too poor and I hit this low shrimpy hook. So we have to, and step five is building in that quality of face to path control that allows you to hit the longest drives of your life. Let's jump right into step five. 108.7 fastest swing speed yet, 163 fastest ball speed yet, attack angle 2.1. That's all the way towards optimized. We've given you and I've been demonstrating the ability to incrementally increase the potential that my driver distance is going to travel and I'm super excited. What I'm not excited about is that ball, that last one that I hit, curved 94 feet to the left. It's out of the fairway on the left side. So whilst it's sent 290, I want it to carry further, go just as far if not further, but also go straighter. That all boils down to me doing a better job of that one data point right in the middle of the screen there, face to path. So let me unpack what face to path is. And I'll go on record saying it's the reason great players are great at golf because they do this really well. It's gonna be the hardest of the things that we have to do or try to do to hit better shots. So if we can think of the white stick here as our target line, ball takes off somewhere relative to that target line. We know that as launch direction. We already talked about launch angle. Now we're talking about the horizontal part, which is the launch direction. If we think about that last shot, my club path was some amount to the right and my face to path was some amount closed. So the red stick being my club face in the last shot it was 3.1 degrees to the left of the face. So if it was zero degrees, then the face and the path would be traveling in the same direction at moment of contact. But there was a difference, wasn't there, right? The face was more closed than the path was. To be exact, the club path, the blue stick was three 0.6 degrees to the right of target, and the face was 3.1 close, so the face was basically at the target. And then what we know about drivers, in fact, almost all shots where that ball is airborne, is the ball is gonna launch on the face and curve away from the path. And so that's the effective ball flight that I just created. I created a ball that launched pretty close to target line, just like so, and then curved away from the path a pretty extreme amount, 95 feet. So what do we need to do is we need to make sure but if we're trying to maximize distance, there's a great probability of more ball speed and more distance if we're hitting with draw. So for a right-handed player, right to left flight, in order for that to happen, we need the path, some amount to the right of our target line. And as a general rule of thumb, we want the face half of the path. So on this next shot, I'm gonna rehearse again the contact piece. So I've got my dry race on the ball. I'm gonna try and shift the path to five or six degrees to the right. I'm gonna try and minimize the face to path gap so I don't get quite as much curve bring the face just a little bit close to the path. And by the process of experimentation, using this critical concept, I think that if it's not the first shot, then it's the second or third, that I'll have all of my five steps 
in order to unlock my safe, which is high value, high distance shots. Let's give it a shot. The easiest and fastest and likely the most realistic way to shift your path more to the right as a right-handed player is to adjust your base. And so then this works back into step one, which is adjusting statics to affect how we impact the ball. This is also real, relevant, and proper. So my first recommendation would be to aim the number of degrees to the right that you want your club path traveling in order for you to maximize your ability to then close the face to path and draw it. So if we build in path right just as foundational to aim, then how do we build in the likelihood of that face not being open for a long period of time, but closing some amount, we twist our logo of our glove to the ground some amount. It doesn't happen at any phase in the swing a lot. It's a blend throughout the downswing, such that the best way to integrate some amount of this and hopefully get the amount that you integrate correct is again, slow rehearsal. There's the right path. There's the face twist, I can feel it. You can probably see it on my wrist. And there's the centered out contact. Okay, putting it all together, as difficult as it may sound, it's gonna take some practice. Let's see how we do. Ooh, close. Let's see what it says. Started out to the right, turning back to the left. Club path 7.8. Face to path, four tenths of a degree. That's the recipe of success. So that's our fifth step right there. Aim to the right, allow more right club path, twist wrist to close the face to path, the soft amount, knowing that it's okay to kind of spend time on an overclose and then an over, over open. It's the Goldilocks learning principle of doing too much, doing too little to find that just right amount. Maximize all of the steps that come before that, or choose your own adventure. It might only be one of these that you apply to help your driver travel further down the fairway. Hope this helps. Do me a favor, subscribe and like. More to come.